Hello Laravel friends, this week I'd like to show some new features in Laravel like getting this patch patches, absurd constraints and the limit that preserve words. Let's go! First, there is a new terminate event in Laravel, which is being dispatched when the terminating part of an incoming request starts. So this is always happening after a request has already been sent back to the user. So if you like to do things when this is happening, now you can listen for this event and react. Thank you, Tim. Next, there is something new when faking the bus system. In Laravel, you can fake specific services like the queue, notification, or the bus system. And this helps you, especially during testing, with some nice assertions that are especially made for you, like assert that nothing was pushed during a test, which is really helpful. But on the queue, you could also get now the pushed jobs. So, so the jobs that were pushed during the test. And something very similar you can do with the notification. You can get the sent notifications. And now new for the bus facade here for the fake version is we can also get dispatched batches. So normally often with those faked implementations, you just to want to make sure that something was pushed or dispatched. But sometimes it also makes sense to retrieve the specific batches or notifications or jobs and then make some assertion against them specifically. And now this is something you can do now for the bus fake as well, because this dispatch batches method was added to it. Thank you, Gunther. When using the absurd eloquent method on a relationship, there was always a little drawback. Until now. We have a bit of code here, so let's go through it together. I have a user in my database. And the user has notification preferences, which is another model. And this just means the user can set some preferences for notifications. And here we're using the absurd method, which we can use to insert or update multiple records. And first argument here are the records. So inside our notification preference, we define a user ID. So for this user, we set the specific product category. In this case, we have food and clothes, and we set SMS to true. So this means we make sure that we have the preference for notification for those two product categories set that we want to um, get not notifications via SMS. That's what we do here. This is the first argument of the absurd method. The second argument is what are the records that make them unique? So we have two, that's the user ID and the product category ID. This is what's unique. So um, that's how the method knows when to do an update and when to do an insert. And on the update here, we can also define what we want to update. In our case, it's just a notification field, email, SMS, and push. All right, and then at the end here, I'm just printing out again the preferences of this user. So let's run this. We get here a collection, but I can also take a look at this collection here and think well as a table here. So we can see for this user, so that's all the first user, we have three different product categories, clothes, electronics, and food. And for all of them, we have set SMS to true so that we get notifications via SMS for all those categories. All right, so this was already working exactly like this before. But something which is a little bit strange here because here we are using a relationship. So this means level could already know that we're using this user so we don't have to define this every time. But if I try to remove this here for both of them, and now let's try to run it again, this will fail because now we have an integrity constraint violation because level doesn't know anymore what the user ID is, um, yeah, which is being pointed out here. So this is not working, but in the new version, it is working. I've just updated this level 11 application here to the latest version, which is level 11.18.1. And I still don't have the user ID here, but if I run this now, you can see that this is working. So that's exactly what's new here is when you use a relationship like this with the absurd method, you don't have to define the user ID or the relationship ID here anymore. Level is now smart enough to know what is being used here. Thank you, Gerger. And last, let's take a look at the new flag for the limit method. Write code for the joy of it. That's our text example for today. And in Level, we have a string helper. This is a facade. 
And here we have a limit method on it. And the first argument is the value, which is our text. And the second argument is the amount of characters that we want to show before we cut the text off. And that's what we get here, write code for the J and then we only see the ellipse here. So this means exactly after 20 characters, this sentence is being cut off. So I guess sometimes, let's try with 10 here. You can see it doesn't look too bad, but our other example before with 20, yeah, this looks a little bit strange and sometimes this is not what you want to. So lucky in our case, we can now use the new preserve words argument where we can say we want to only use full words. And here we go, write code for the, and now the J is gone because this wasn't a full word. If we um, increase the limit here to 22, yeah, you can see now we're showing Troy here, even though this was a little bit more than two characters um, that is being shown. But yeah, that's the point here of this new limit method with the preserve words argument to only show a fragment of your sentence, but keep the, the words showing in full and don't cut them off. And I believe this is pretty handy. Thank you, Wesley. That's it for this week. Let me know which of the new features you like the most in the comments and see you the next time. Bye.